and today I'll be showing you how to sew a shirt jacket. This pattern is available in kids and adult sizes. It's fully lined, has really nice professional finishes, Got fully enclosed seams through the whole jacket. Um, this jacket that I made has a hood and that's what I'll be showing you in the tutorial today, but the pattern also includes a collar. I've included the two optional chest pockets. There's also an option for a little pocket flap you can add above the pockets with a button. And I also included the two inseam pockets here on the side. Here's the view from the back. It's got this fun back yoke detail. Really makes a professional jacket. I sewed this one out of flannel for the outside and Sherpa. Um, as the lining, it also works great with like fleece or minky, corduroy, lots of fun choices. Let's go ahead and get started. The first step in this pattern is to sew the upper and lower back pieces together. Just line them up along this edge, sew them together. I do have my upper back piece cut on the bias since I'm using plaid. It just adds a little more visual interest. So we'll line those up, sew them together. If you'd rather not have a seam there, if you want to just have a solid back piece, this is my back lining. You could use that pattern piece to cut your outer back as well if you want to skip the yoke. And then next I have prepped my front pieces. So there's a pattern piece for the interfacing. It's a one inch strip of interfacing that goes down the placket. I have that on both of my pieces. And then you're gonna fold over half an inch and then another inch right on the interfacing line and press that flat. Don't sew it yet, you're just gonna get that pressed. And then I've got my pocket pieces prepped and then we'll sew those on next. So I decided not to do the pocket flaps this time, but if you're doing the pocket flaps, you'll also have two pocket flap pieces and two interfacing pieces. So I've got the interfacing on the back. Don't skip this because it makes it a lot easier to press your pocket. So then you're just gonna press the fabric in towards the interfacing. And around the corners, it's gonna just be a little wrinkled. You can see there's like a few little pleats there. So you just fold it right around that interfacing and then the top edge gets pressed over a quarter inch and then another three quarter inches. And then you need to top stitch across the top edge of the pocket. So I'm gonna go get that done and then we'll get the pockets attached to the front piece. My two back pieces are now sewn together and I also top stitched along the bottom edge of the upper back piece. So our back is all ready to go. Moving back to the front pieces and the pockets. So I have marked on here from the pattern the pocket placement markings. I top stitched the top of the pocket down and all the edges are pressed under. So I'm just going to line up the corners of the pocket with my markings. And then I'll pin that in place and go top stitch it down. If you only want to include one chest pocket. Uh, you can definitely do that or you can do no chest pockets. But if you're only going to do one, I'd recommend putting it on the wearer's left as traditionally if you're just doing one pocket, that's how you do it. So I'm doing two pockets. So I'm going to go top stitch these down to both sides of my front jacket. I have the chest pockets top stitched on to both of my front pieces. So now I'm going to add the inseam pockets if you want to include those. That's the next step. So you'll have one on each side seam of your front pieces. I already have these sewn down. And then you'll also have just the same thing on the back. So we have our pockets. 
and then you're gonna press them away from the body of the jacket. And press them just like this. Um, and with the front chest pockets, if you're including the pocket flaps, which I'm not this time, but those will get attached before you move on right up here and you can add a little button. So the next thing that we're gonna do after doing the inseam pockets is we're gonna sew the front and back together at the shoulder seams. So here's my two front pieces. Here's my back piece. Just line up these shoulder seams and sew them together. The front and back are now sewn together at the shoulder seams. And I also top stitch the seam allowance to that back yoke piece. That's an optional step. And I'm gonna spread this out and get my sleeves pinned on. The sleeves can be a little tricky if you haven't ever done them before, but they're not that bad. So I'm gonna grab my sleeve piece. I'm gonna find the center of the sleeve. And I just do that by folding it in half. And then I'm gonna pin that to the shoulder seam. And then you'll pin the ends of the sleeve down to the ends of the arm opening. Match those up. Do that on both sides. So it's gonna look like it's not really matching up, but it will once you keep pinning. So don't worry that, you know, it looks like kind of a hot mess right now. So then I'm just gonna keep pinning these together. Just match up the edges. You can see that all matches up, even though it looked like it wasn't going to. There we go. Keep going down this side. And once you get more comfortable with sleeves, like I normally, I only pin the center of the sleeve and the shoulder. Sometimes I'll pin the ends too, and then I just go for it on the sewing machine. But definitely a good idea to use plenty of pins as you're starting out. So I have that all pinned. We'll do the same thing on the other side. I normally only pin one sleeve on at a time though, so I don't accidentally like catch the other sleeve in my seam. So I'm gonna go sew this down and then we'll just do the exact same thing on the other side. I have the sleeves attached on both sides of the jacket and I also top stitched the sleeve seam allowance to the body of the jacket. It just gives it a really professional finish. It makes it a little more durable. So now we're ready to sew the side seams. Just gonna flip it around so you can get right sides together. So remember your inseam pockets, if you included them, should be pressed out like that. So you'll line up the bottom of edge of the jacket on front and back and then the pockets and you're going to just keep going up the side seam here and make sure it's aligned at the underarm and get all these edges lined up and then just keep going down the sleeve. And if you used uh, plaid or stripes or something for your outer fabric and actually made sure to pay attention to that when you cut out your pieces, you can make sure you're matching things up as you pin. I tried to pay attention to that with my front and back and they mostly are lined up, but the plaid on this fabric was not like perfectly square, so I couldn't get them 100% to match up on both pieces, but not a huge deal. So when I sew these together, I'll start at the bottom, go just inside this line where my pockets are, and then pivot and come around and go around the outside of the pocket. And we're gonna do that on both sides of the jacket.
The outside layer of the jacket is all put together now, so we can set that aside and get the lining assembled, which is really quick and easy because it's basically the same thing as the outer jacket, but without the pockets. So I already have my lining put together. I sewed the shoulder seams together first, then added the sleeves and finished it with the side seams. The only change for the lining, other than that you don't have pockets, is if you wanna add a little hanging loop, you'll sew that on right here. I'm not gonna bother on this jacket because I'm including a hood and my kids always just hang their coats up by the hoods. But if you are doing a hanging loop, you'll put that right there and that's in the pattern instructions. So we can set the lining aside now and we'll move on to either the hood or the collar. So I'm doing the hood for this jacket. I have my lining hood pieces sewn together and then for the outer hood, before you sew the pieces together, you're going to press the hem. It's just a lot easier to press while they're still flat rather than sewn together. So you'll fold over half an inch twice and press it flat and you'll do that on both sides and then before you sew them together you're gonna unfold that so I'll have my hem unfolded and sew it together and then we'll put our two layers of the hood together the outer layer of the hood is sewn together so I'm, now I'm ready to get the hood and the lining put together so I'm gonna turn this right side out and slide the hood lining inside of it. So I have wrong sides together. And then we're gonna wrap our hem around the hood lining. The hood lining was cut using a different cutting line than the outer hood, so it's a little narrower than the outer hood, which is what gives you room to wrap this hem around. So I'm gonna wrap that around one in there and then I'm going to do the top so this is my hem that's half an inch then another half an inch wraps right around this fluffy Sherpa layer and that way your hem isn't too bulky so you're just going to keep doing that all the way around the hood Give it a really nice finish and then go top stitch it down. The hood is all put together now, so I'm ready to attach it to the neckline of the outer layer of the jacket. So I'm going to line up the seam and the hood. Make sure your lining and outer layer are together. And you'll have a notch on the upper back piece here. I accidentally cut mine off. <laughs> Just find the center, center back and match that up with the hood seam. And then you'll unfold the plackets and the edge of the hood should be an inch and a half from the end of your jacket, which is gonna be right where your inner facing ends, where that pressed line is. Now, if you're making the collar version, the collar will end two inches from the edge. So pin the center and the ends, and then you'll kind of ease the pieces together. This can be a little tricky, especially with the collar version, I normally don't have any trouble with the hood, but just be patient with your pinning. I feel like your neckline, if it seems like the neckline is too big, it might be stretching out a bit. The neckline is naturally kind of cut on the bias, which is stretchy. So if this seems like it's stretching and you just cannot get your hood or collar to line up, sew a straight stitch along the neckline that's called stay stitching and it'll prevent it from stretching out. And then pin your centers and your ends and slowly ease the pieces together. Um, if you're also, if you're having trouble getting it to fit, 
Make sure that you used a half inch seam allowance for your shoulder seams. If you used only a quarter inch seam allowance, that's gonna make your whole neckline an inch bigger than it's supposed to be. So this is an inch and a half, right where my, my fold line is. Go sew this hood to the neckline. The hood is now attached to the neckline of the outer jacket. So we're gonna finish the top edge of the placket. You'll fill the placket backwards, the opposite direction of how you had first pressed it. So you'll fold it right on the edge of the interfacing. The edge of your hood should line right up with the interfacing and then refold the half inch. And we're just gonna pin that in place and we'll go sew across that edge. If you're doing the collar option, the collar will only go halfway into the placket. Now we'll do the exact same thing on the other side of the jacket. If you're doing the sleeve cuff option, we're gonna go ahead and get those ready. I have already sewn my sleeve cuffs together. You're gonna to sew each cuff together along the side seams. I'm using a stretchy rib net for my cuffs. So I'm gonna open up my seam allowance and fold the cuffs so that wrong sides are together. So here's my cuff right here, ready to attach to the jacket. So I'm going to slide that over the sleeve of the jacket. And then you want to line up the seam in the cuff with the seam in the jacket. So here's my seam right here. I'm going to line that up with the jacket seam. And pin that in place. And then stretch the cuff to fit the jacket and pin together. So I've got that stretched out so the sleeve fabric is laying flat. Pin that in place. And I normally just use a couple pins when I do this. You don't need to pin all the way around the cuff. And when you sew, you'll want to keep the rib net stretched out so that the sleeve is laying flat. So before we attach the lining, we just need to fold the bottom edge of the sleeve linings up half an inch towards the wrong side of the fabric. And then we can go ahead and pin the neckline of the lining to the neckline of the outer jacket. Your placket should still be inside out. So we're gonna find the notch in the lining neckline and match that up with the center back of our outer jacket. So I'm matching it up with my hood seam or you'll have a notch on the collar piece to help you get that centered and then line up the edge of the lining, the center front edge, with the folded edge of the placket. So it should be all the way on this far edge, not on the inside edge, but the far edge. You'll line that up and pin that in place. And then next, we're gonna match up the shoulder seams. So find the shoulder seam of the lining and match that up with the shoulder seam of the outer jacket. And I like to either have both my seams pressed open or if your shoulder seam on your outer layer, like mine's going towards the back. So I'm gonna press my seam from the lining towards the front just to reduce some bulk. Pin those together. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side of the neckline. Just keep working my way across to get this pinned in place.
lining is sewn on, so now I'm just gonna trim the neckline seam allowance down to reduce the bulk. Since I use this really fluffy Sherpa, I'm just gonna trim that layer down more like a eighth or a quarter of an inch. Just trim that off and that'll make it lay a little better. Get rid of some of that bulk. I'm gonna trim the whole neckline and then we're also gonna clip the neckline seam allowance. So you're just gonna clip all along the neckline about every half an inch. Make sure you don't snip through your seam. You don't wanna go past that line, but just snip along the neckline. Make sure you don't catch any of the layers underneath. You should only be cutting the seam allowance. And by clipping this neckline, it'll lay a lot more nicely when you're finished. Otherwise the neckline will pull. And then you're gonna trim the seam allowance at the corners. So after that's done, we're gonna get the sleeves sewn together. So your lining should still be inside out and your jacket should also be inside out. So I need to switch my sleeves around because they've been turned right side out. So I'm gonna pull that back through so it's inside out again. Lay that sleeve out. So I've got the seam on the bottom, grab the lining sleeve so it also has the seam on the bottom. Make sure they're not twisted at all. You don't want it to be turned or you won't be able to get your arm through the coat sleeve. So I've made sure that they're both laying in the same direction. Nothing's twisted. If you included cuffs, they should be inside the outer sleeve. Now you're just gonna line the two layers up kind of like they're shaking hands. So they should meet right there and then you'll just slide the lining inside the outer sleeve and line up your raw edges. So I've got both of the layers lined up at the sleeve seam. I'll show you guys that one more time. Just slide it right inside the outer sleeve. Seams are lined up and then we're going to match up the raw edges and pin them together. Just slide that in there and keep pinning along the edge. If your sleeve lining is stretchy, sometimes it can be a little hard to get it lined up if your outer layer is not stretchy, but just keep pinning them together and you'll get it all matched up. If you do end up with a little pucker in your sleeve lining, it's not a big deal since it'll be on the inside of the jacket. So once you have that all pinned together, you'll do the exact same thing on the other sleeve and then we can go sew them together. I sewed the other sleeve and sleeve lining together using the exact same method and now we can turn the jacket right side out. So you'll just stick your arm through the outer sleeve and then you can pull the sleeve lining inside the sleeve. So we're turning the outer jacket right side out and pulling the lining into place. Get the lining all positioned on the inside of the jacket. You can see your jacket is starting to take shape. And we have this really nice finished seam on the inside of the sleeve. It really is worth going to the extra effort to get that nice finish. It's so much more comfortable to wear, to have that fully enclosed. Our neckline seam is also now fully enclosed. If you included the little hanging loop, it would be right here. Now we're ready to finish up the plackets. 
So you're going to align the edge of your lining layer with the edge of your interfacing for the placket. And line that up all the way down the length of the front of the jacket and then refold the placket around your lining. So you're just refolding it on the lines that you've already pressed and the lining is sandwiched in between. I'm gonna pin that in place and then go top stitch down the inside edge of my placket. Placket is finished, so now we're ready to finish the bottom edge of the jacket using our bias trim. So I've gone ahead and sewn my two pieces of trim together and press that seam open. And then you're going to press one long edge over 3 8 of an inch. If you don't want to make your own bias trim, you can use extra wide single fold bias tape instead. I like to make my own just so it matches the jacket perfectly, but you can definitely use store-bought if you'd like. It's only going to show on the inside of the jacket. I'm going to pin the center of my bias trim to the center back of the jacket. You should have the outer jacket and the lining aligned, so you'll be pinning the trim to both layers. If you're having trouble keeping the layers together, you can base them together first. Since we cut this trim on the bias, it has a little bit of stretch, which helps it go around these curves really nicely. So I'm just gonna keep pinning this trim all the way around to the end of the jacket. And when you get to the end, you should have at least half an inch left over. I have a little bit more than that, and that's fine. The pattern piece is drafted a little, with a little bit of extra wiggle room. You just want to make sure you have at least half an inch. So then we're going to move down and keep pinning to the other side and then we'll go sew this on. The bias trim is now sewn to the bottom edge of the jacket so we can trim our excess. You want to leave at least half an inch so don't trim so it's flush with the edge of the placket. Just leave half an inch tail on each side. Trim that off. Now we're going to fold it over and we're going to fold all of the bias trim to the inside of the jacket. So you're going to tuck the little raw edge under, that's why we left the half inch tail, and then we're going to fold all of the bias tape up towards the inside of the jacket. So you can see on the outside you can't see any of the bias trim. All of the trim is folded to the inside layer and you'll have your seam allowance down there on the bottom edge of the jacket. So I'm going to keep folding that up to the inside of the jacket and then I'm going to go sew it in place along the top edge of the bias trim. This trim is attached to the bottom of the jacket now. It's a really nice finish. So the only thing we have left to do is to add either buttons or snaps. So make sure you line up your jacket at the neckline and the bottom edge. Make sure everything's matching up. So for a girl's jacket, traditionally it goes right over left from the wearer's perspective and a boy's is the opposite. I normally pick whichever side looks better to be on top. So I kind of tried this both ways and I, my plaid was kind of, it's running at a bit of an 
angle on this side. So I'm gonna put this side on top for this jacket because it really doesn't matter. So pick whichever side you think looks best to be on top and then you'll space out your buttons or snaps. So put one just below the neckline and I normally make the bottom one, like I don't put it all the way at the bottom, it's like two or three inches up. So I've already marked out the spacing for mine. This is a kid's size 10 and the rec recommended amount of snaps is six, but if you want them closer together, you could use more and that would be just fine. For this particular jacket, I'm using these Dritz heavy duty snaps, which actually I have never used this kind before. <laughs> They're different than what I've ever seen. So it might be a little bit of an adventure getting them on here, but this is the cap. And then they have this little like, I don't know, washer with like a prong. And then these are the two sides. So I'm gonna figure out how to get these on here. Um, I do, luckily in my stash of tools, I think this will do the trick. But make sure when you're buying snaps, you buy something you uh, have the right equipment to get them on there. They do sell like kits to install these or pliers. I just didn't realize that this was different than I kind of used before. Okay, I figured out how to get these snaps on here. Luckily, the tools that I happen to have in my stash of random notions pulled through for me. Uh, so the cap obviously goes on the outside part of the placket. And then I, so I got that one on. And then on the other side, I've got this little piece, which looks just like the cap, except it's not pretty on the back side. So that goes on the inside. And then I'm putting the other side of the snap. Actually, is that the right side? Okay. Hang on, let me make sure I get the right snap piece. There we go. Okay, so I used the one that looked like this on the outside layer of my placket. So I need the one that, this one's like poking out. So the like stud will go on the other side. So test it before to make sure you've got the right piece. I just about hammered the wrong piece on there. So I put that over and then you're gonna need either on your pliers or on the little tool, the one that's like a tapered edge. You're gonna just put it on there and whack it with a hammer a few times. Oh, all right, so that is Good to go. We have all the snaps on the jacket now. So this project is now all finished up. I hope you love your shirt jacket as much as I do. You can find more of our patterns at peekaboopatternshop.com.